Diego, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Since you've been here, you guys have been so good at this time of the year, the month of October. 12-3-3, three and three, the Timbers record since 2013 in the final month of the season. That includes the 4-1 win at RSL a couple weeks ago. How has this team been so good year after year at the end of the season, and how do you guys continue that with two games to go? <clears throat> I think it's a mindset. It's a mindset, that, and, uh, you know, hopefully we, we keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we are ready, uh, you know, to face this part of the year, which is the most important. And, uh, you know, there's a mindset in the team that everybody is focused on his, their role and uh, trying to execute it in the field. You followed up your MVP season from last year in fine fashion. You became the third player in MLS history to record 10 goals, at least 10 goals, 10 assists in four different seasons. For you, what's been important about this continued success? Uh, I think uh, it's been important to forget all the past seasons <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, face the new one. Uh, that's, a, that's key in soccer, you know, leave the present. And, uh, you know, besides the stats, which, you know, uh, probably outside the field, people take care about it. We, I, I'm not a guy that, you know, put a lot of attention in stats. But, uh, you know, w what is key for me is to forgot the past, learn from, learn from the past, but forgot the what you achieve in the past and you know go forward to to fight for new things and that's that's key your success has come with you continuing to play in that number 10 position you've had to share that position at times with sebastian blanco the last game against rsl you were in there alone in that pocket what changes depending on whether blanco's in there with you or without you it changed it changed uh you know the that position of number 10 in a uh, four Two, three, one. You have to connect more. You have to, you know, keep more your position and trying to, to be a yeah a connector of, of uh, trying to get different triangles. You know, it depends where the ball is or where the team needs. So you know, playing in, in the other system, you have more uh, position uh, to cover in the right or, or in, in the midfield. So it's it's kind of different, but uh, I like it. I like you know if the team. Uh, plays better. Uh, whatever uh, every, everyone has to play, has to find the, the, the way to have the team. Off the field, following up the MVP season, it seems like there's been more of a focus on you league-wide, certainly in the lead-up to this year, in the preseason, and, and then as the season goes on, more appearances, sponsor appearances, even than you were doing before. How do you uh, kind of handle that, balance that, and do you enjoy being kind of a face of Major League Soccer? Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's. I I knew that, but it's part of our of our job, and 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 uh, you know you have to be uh, uh, you know focus on on your job and, and and trying to to let this thing happen, and then you know quickly goes away, mm -hmm. and try to be focused on on the game and and how you know be better every every training, every every game. For the team, that's it. I'm, I, I, I enjoy, you know, this league. I enjoy playing in this club, and that's that's all. I think, uh, you know, as a players, we are all, all in the in the middle of the storm, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's normal. But uh, I think that quickly goes away. Part of those extra features, one was with. Lindsay Horan, MVP of NWSL this year, fantastic video with yourself and her. What was that whole process like doing the video with Lindsay? It was so funny. It was <laughs> so funny. It was a funny afternoon <laughs> with Lindsay. Uh, you know, we we got almost a second training, a second <laughs> training that day, but it was fun. It was fun, and uh, we we got a good time. I think the the video was excellent, and uh, and you know, I think everybody enjoyed it, which. It was uh, the idea of, of doing that. She nutmegged you at the end. Did you get it back? Uh, no, 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 and I couldn't. I couldn't, I couldn't. We, we didn't have more time, so she, she was very smart. Diego now taking, RS, taking on RSL for the second time. They have it all to play for. As Jake mentioned, it's their final game of the year, just a rare situation because of the schedule. What do you expect from Real Salt Lake? I mean, we, we expect a team that uh, needs a win, so mm -hmm. very aggressive in pressure in the counter attack, uh, probably trying to get some long balls were you know they in the last game they they were a little bit dangerous only with that you know trying to put in some long balls so we had to put some pressure there and be focused on that mm -hmm. and uh, and then obviously they have a couple of guys that can create something from nothing and uh, we have to win that duels and uh you know uh, it depends how it goes the game managing the ball defending with the ball uh you know take advantage of of they needed which is 
you know, that they have to win. So we will try to dominate the game with the ball and trying to, to manage the game with the with the result if we score a goal uh, first. As Ross was kind of going through their team and predicting who will be where, it's difficult for this game, especially for Salt Lake. One, they played on, on you know Thursday to Sunday. It's a short turnaround. They used a lot of kind of second-choice guys in that 4-1 win over New England who played very well. I imagine for you guys, as you're trying to predict who they're going to trot out on Sunday, you don't know. How do you prepare for a team when you're not quite sure who, who you're going to see in what position? It's really hard, but uh, we prepare the game thinking in us first, in how we are going to play, how we are going to press, and and what kind of team we want to be when we have the ball and we when we don't have the ball, and that first, and then obviously knowing their players and you know scouting a little bit the the last game against New, New England, and uh, obviously waiting that most of the guys that didn't play will play, right? Because it's the it's the last game of the season and they would put a lot all all in this game. This is something that's been talked about a little bit. We talked about it on our broadcast a couple weeks ago in Salt Lake. The similarities between the schedule in 2015, when you guys won MLS Cup in 2018. You went on the road to Salt Lake, and you won with three games left. You guys did that again this year. Now, not to say that the run will continue all the way to MLS Cup. Obviously, you guys hope it does. What do you take from that run, though, which started on the road at Salt Lake with three games to go, that you can bring to what you're trying to do now? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, every, every, every year is different and uh, that's, that's what, why uh, soccer is good <laughs> and nice. So, but uh, the, good, the good thing or the thing that we can bring from, from that year is that the team it was at his, his best uh, physically, mentally and uh, the best confidence. So all the confidence was, the, was there, Everybody, everyone uh, very focused on his role and that creates a great team. Right, and uh, and then uh, thinking every game as the as the last one. That's that's really important.